first reason why people tend to get poor posture through walking is relating to the head position. The head tends to jut forward. The implication is when you start to move, the spine doesn't naturally rotate, which is an important function of the spine. It should flex, extend, but importantly, also rotate. Incorrect head position will mean we lose out on the ability to rotate the spine. When it comes to the hip slump, as soon as we actually slump in the hips, we have a direct impact on your posture. You can see that really has an impact on Jen and how she looks. So when we slump in the hips, not only does it affect our posture, it means we're putting more pressure on the hip joint and the easiest way for the leg to come forward is by using the quad and the hip flexor, which again, takes away and compromises good posture. Here's how we make over those two problems. The first thing with the head. We want to be thinking about the distance between your earlobes and your shoulders. So we're lengthening the distance between these two points. This muscle becomes lengthened and stretched and then it allows the shoulder to open. This will directly mean that the shoulder muscles start to relax and the spine can do what it's meant to do, which is rotate as well as flex and extend. Now with the hips, we need to think about achieving a hip lift. So imagine you have a cup of water on this hip and a cup of water on that hip, and you want to draw up, pulling up out of your hips, increasing the distance between the pubic bone and the sternum. Not only do we cosmetically flatten this area, but we also functionally take the pressure off the hip joints. And importantly, it means that we start to use the glutes, the powerful muscle at the back of the leg. There's softness on the outside, but you really feel how you've got that length through the body. You've opened up the hip. Every single step you take with the correct head position and a hip lift with walk active means your posture is better.